Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of How Government Works. Today I'm being joined by U.S. Senator Marsha Blackburn. Senator Blackburn, thank you so much for being with us today. Ma'am, let's start by finding out about Marsha Blackburn. Can you tell us about yourself, please? Well, I'd be happy to. I grew up in South Mississippi, one of three children, great parents, all involved in the community. Went to college at Mississippi State University on the 4-H Club Scholarship. When I got there, I realized that that wasn't going to pay for college and I needed a job. My brother had a great job knocking on doors, selling books 80 hours a week for a company in Nashville, Tennessee, the Southwestern Company. So they didn't hire women is what I found out, but I continued to work and convince them that I was capable of door-to-door -door sales. So long story short, I did that. I built an organization. I helped them develop a women's division and worked for them full time after college. And Williamson County is even today home to our family. We have two children, uh, three grandchildren, and one more grandchild on the way. Can you tell us about your career in politics, please? Uh, you know, it's just not sure. something right. that I had thought about. I was busy um, being a wife, a mother, uh, working. And then as we were recruiting somebody for a state Senate seat, somebody said, you ought to run for this seat, which I did. I won the primary and then went on to serve in the state Senate. How many terms did you serve in the state Senate? I served one term, one term in the state Senate. So can you tell us about that transition and what compelled you to run for Congress? We had the member of Congress in that district, uh, Tennessee 7th Congressional District, was retiring out of the seat to run for an open U.S. Senate seat. So it was an open seat. And I decided that, uh, yes, I would love to be of service at the congressional level. I had fought the state income tax. I knew the burden of taxation and going to D.C. and defending people, defending freedom, free people, free markets. So that is something that was um, I really had a desire and people were coming to me and saying, look, you've done this at the state level. Uh, you've helped to change our state. Let's take that energy to DC and begin to work on the issues there. So we ran and won and were able to serve for eight terms in the House before I ran for Senate and won that seat. So you have a unique perspective because you have served at the state level and then you have served at the federal level in Congress, but not only in the Senate where you are now, but also the House. Can you describe the differences uh, between what a U.S. Congressperson does and their authorities as opposed to what the United States Senator does and their duties and obligations? Right, and our U.S. congressional districts have just under 800,000 people in each district and here, in this area, you've got Tim Burchett, who does a great job and is serving as the member of Congress. I like to say that the House is more rambunctious <laughs> than the Senate. And many times it's easier to file messaging bills mm -hmm. and go to the floor and talk on a, a specific issue. And you're tending to your specific district. And it is very different from the Senate. You're dealing with the entire state and you're working with the different organizations in the state. And you're working closely with the governor and making certain that you're looking out after your state and the citizens of that state. So I convene as the state's senior senator once every quarter I convene all of our congressional delegation. We sit down, we work through issues, we find out legislation that different uh, members of the House are working on. And I try to see how Senator Haggerty and I can best help them with what they need, to, need attention to in their district. The Senate has some distinct responsibilities. For instance, you um, 
approve members of the president's cabinet. You approve Supreme Court justices. Can you talk about that specifically? Uh, you know, what, what the, the Senate in some ways you know, has more uh, more power than the House does in those particular areas. Right, uh, the Senate is in what I say is the personnel business. <laughs> when it comes to filling the federal judiciary, our U.S. Marshals, uh, our uh, U.S. Attorneys, and then also all of our cabinet appointments and the support team for those cabinet appointments, uh, we approve nominations in the U.S. military as people are moving up their ranks. All of that comes through us. From your perspective, can you tell us about the importance of voting and taking part in that process oh, and yes. making your voice known in that arena, especially among young people? And it is so imperative. That is your voice. And one person, one vote. That is why we want to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. <laughs> and that way everybody knows that their vote is going to count. And an informed electorate is what keeps this nation free and people showing up to exercise their right to vote. Well, ma'am, thank you so much for your time here and thank you for the service to the state of Tennessee and to the United States of America. Absolutely, thank you.